All right, we're trying round two of cocktails and coaching tonight. The first one, I think we had some connectivity problems. Um, so I came inside to get closer to the Wi-Fi uh, here at my daughter's house. And we'll see if that helps. So I'm going to tag a couple people who were here before. Marsha and Leanne. So they know we're back. Oh yay, Nancy's watching. Hey Nancy, happy to have you here. I'm bringing on Rupa, my co-host now. We had a few connection problems a little bit ago. So I've changed locations to get closer to the Wi-Fi. <laughs> I'm in the art room of my granddaughters. <laughs> okay. okay. Yay. Yay. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna try and turn this and see if that. Can you still see me? Okay. You're, know, you know, you yeah, you're laying sideways. <laughs> it's just some right. weird thing with this particular it function. Is. It must be the Facebook Live stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think Donna is on. I just talked to Donna yesterday, actually, too. Oh, okay, great. Well, we've got Nancy. It says Nancy's watching. Um, I know. Uh, do you know Nancy Sinclair Brook? She, I met I her know. at a Girls Gone Wild or whatever Susan Hyatt used to call her dinners, you know, when she yeah, did yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I met Nancy at one of those, so that's fun. Um, I tagged a couple of the other people who had joined earlier in, in case, cool. you know, they just weren't able to really stay on, you know, whatever, if it was a connection problem. Um, it must have been because this seems like it's good. Can you hear me okay, too? Yes, yes. I'm getting Perfect. you fine, too. So, awesome. so cool. So, I'm so glad that you're here. And I always know, you know, with every cocktails and coaching, there's some people who can join us live. And then there's other people who watch it on the replay because it's hard to, you know, be somewhere at a certain time on a Wednesday night or any other night. So, yeah. uh, you know, we always love everybody who's here live and, you know, whether it's short term or for the whole broadcast and, you know, really enjoy people who are watching the replay. And always, I always say like, feel free to make comments or ask any questions that you have as Rupa and I chat. Um, if, if you're watching the replay, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm, you know, you're in the Facebook group. You'll notice mm -hmm. if people make comments. Of course, I always get notified if people make comments. So we love to keep the conversation going. So tell us Rupa a little bit about your story and what brought you to the work that you're doing. And then we'll talk about the work you're doing. Cause I love, Love, I have a million questions of my own to ask you because I love your work so much okay. and it's so Thank intriguing you. to me. So, uh, tell I know you her... reached out to me about a year ago. That's when I actually started talking to you, right? Yes, yes, yes. Before and I think and I stuff. just saw one of your fabulous pictures on Facebook. I can't, that's how I remember it. I'm not sure that's 100% accurate, but I just think you showed up in my feed somehow, maybe through our connection with Susan Hyde or something. I don't know. I think so. Yeah, and I think it was from Susan. I saw your photos and was just so impressed and blown away by them. Uh, so, so tell us about, you know, your journey and how you got to doing that. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to make a face at you. This necklace was like pulling at something. A in the back Don't of my make neck. a face at me. <laughs> I know, like when it grabs that one little hair on the back of your neck or something, it's just like ah. That's probably crooked. I've been running. I was like trying to get through Atlanta traffic to get over here. I'm in my studio right now, actually. So okay. um, I decided to come over here because I told you I've got my little senior dog that lets me get nothing done in the evening. Yeah. So um, this would be a very different call if it, it was if it was her here. So, okay. Um, <laughs> But so, okay, so I don't know, like, how I got started in this. So I've been, as a photographer, I've been photographing since I was probably, like, 14, 15 years old. Oh, wow. My dad actually, um, for my 15th birthday, I got my first Minolta, um, like, film, real film camera, you know? Yeah. And um, I would take my sisters. I took slide classes. I took photography classes. I, I loved it. And I would take my sisters out and, like, them be my models, like, make them hang off of things just to scare the crap out of them, basically. Right. And I would have a lot of fun with it, building portfolio. And, um... Then I moved to Germany when I was in my early 20s. I was first married really young, and we lived in Germany because he was in the military. Okay. And, um, and I actually had a little photography business out there with a friend of mine. 
and she was a photographer. Her husband was a pilot. My ex-husband was a pilot. And um, we basically started photographing families in front of like old castles. And that was oh, like, cool. like backdrops, like fake backdrops. And so, right. um, you know, and then I came to America, got this reality check of what it was like out here. And I didn't really do my business for a while. And then I was starting, I just kind of picked up the camera again because I missed the creativity. I really mm -hmm. missed the creativity. And then when I got laid off, I went back to corporate, um, you know, evolved like into my early 40s, I guess. And then okay. when I got laid off, my son was already like 17 years old, I think, by then. And um, I decided that I was just going to go for it. And I started my own business. Okay. And I did what everybody else does, right? So I did what a lot of photographers do back in the day. I started out doing family and children and, you know, and I didn't love it. Right. It was good. I just didn't love it. Yeah. And then I started uh, photographing shelter pets and I started photographing oh. animals. Oh. And um, we found that the photography uh, photographing rescue animals made a huge difference for their adoption rates. So adoption uh -huh. rates went up like 70%. So we're like, okay. I did a lot of volunteer work. And then people started paying me for pet photography. You know, I actually have a, a huge wall in my studio of all my pet photography. Ooh. Sorry. So <laughs> that awesome. evolved. And then. I don't know. Then I just started working with women um, because I was in a business group. Kind yeah. of like, you know, how you're in Susan Hyatt's when you were working with Susan Hyatt. Yeah. I was in another business group years ago. And um, a woman that I met at dinner one night said, I've been stalking you on Facebook. And um, as you do. And she's like, I see some work that you did like a while back. And it's like these gorgeous pictures of women. And I'm like, yeah, it was a lot of fun. But who would want that? You know, and that was like five years ago. And she's like, well, I kind of want it. And I was like, do you? And she's like, yeah. She goes, I don't know if I want the gowns and all that, but I want like this beautiful, fun headshot. And I was like, okay. So I was in Asheville at the time um, doing okay. these meetings and that's how I got started. And so these women just like, they kept hearing about me and kept hearing about me. So every time I went to Asheville for these business meetings, I would get another woman or five women that wanted to hire me. Okay. And so I kind of got known for my different headshots. Like I do... It's not really branding. I just do like a personality driven headshot for a lot of entrepreneurial women. Yeah. Um, but then I found like these past two years, like lawyers are coming to me. I mean, I have a, I have a huge client. I love, and so, you know, you guys may not know, but like my specialty is working with women. Uh -huh. So I photograph some men every so often, but it's really about women and like making them feel seen, show up, mm. be heard. And I realized, and I was telling a client this, a gal yesterday, um, I actually talked to a client at dinner tonight. One of the reasons I think that it started happening, a lot of why I think it started happening is that that's the part that I miss in myself. Like, I don't think I've ever really felt seen or heard. Okay. And I create a really sacred space for women in my studio to feel that. Yeah. Because that's what they tell me. Yeah. So I think the whole business has evolved from not just straight up photography. Like photography is my tool that I uh -huh. use. Uh -huh. Um, and it's, it's a way I capture women, but I think ultimately some really deep work happens when women really show up and then they see themselves and they feel pretty or yes. they feel like they're loving their bodies. And it doesn't matter that they're 20 pounds heavier than they think they should be. Like, I don't really think that there's ever like a should be anything, you know, yeah. I mean, because every woman I work with, I work with women that are, you know, I don't know, 110 pounds, 150 pounds, it doesn't matter to me. Right. And they're like, you know, I think it's, it's on how women feel. So I think when I take the photos, it's about that feeling mm -hmm. and, and the feeling that they get when they walk away. And what I'm seeing more and more is that women feel more empowered. Yeah. So honestly, Brenda, like for me, and, and you see a lot of my posts, I just got done meeting, having dinner with a client. And she said, I saw your post last week where I just like was having a really bad moment like the mean girl kind of kicks in and I'm yeah. really open about that you know but I think that in in the studio and with my camera I think I allow women to like really feel who they are and feel into their bodies mm. um and we do it I don't do the typical like you know just sit there and smile we dance we play music we do a lot of really cool things yeah to like awaken the body a little bit and so women can feel it so yeah that's just like I haven't even owned it recently, but I think that that's something that I've just brought in very naturally yeah. because of all my history of what I've gone through, you know, in my past. Yeah. So, so say a little bit more, if you don't mind about, you know, maybe some, some pieces of that story of, of your past that really, because you said, you know, you didn't feel seen and heard a lot. And I think that that's something that we can all relate to. Yeah. 
And so what, but I think that how that happened for all of us is, you know, different. And so I'd love to hear just a little bit more about, you know, how that really, what that looked like for you in your life. Um, you know, I think it goes, and I, I mean, and the funny thing is I don't hold, I, I, I have learned that I hold all the accountability, right? Yeah. So one thing that I've learned and a lot of the healing work that I've done is that there's no blame because right. I have choices all the right. time. Right. But when you're in a physical place or if you're in a marriage that does not serve you very well, mm -hmm. um, sometimes as a young woman, you don't even know it. So yeah. like, as I talk to women now, like if I hear that they're in like a really, and they're telling me about what's happening, I don't ever say you need to get out, but I kind of like educate now because I wish somebody had educated me 25 years ago. Um, because I, I don't talk about it a lot like publicly, but mm -hmm. I went through, um, two pretty, pretty rough marriages and for uh -huh. an Indian woman to go through two marriages, like I'm like the red herring, mm -hmm. there ain't many of us, you know what I mean? So, but I left for the right reasons. The first time I left, cause I didn't want my daughter and son being like, I didn't want my son being his dad. It was not a good situation. Right. And I right. knew I was protecting the children by doing that. And then I got remarried and was with that man for about 25 years. And, and as my last three years of the marriage, I started realizing how abusive it was. Mm -hmm. And when I say abusive, like he never touched me physically, he never hurt, hurt me. I didn't realize how, um, emotionally yes. toxic it was yes. and how my body, as my therapist said, you know, um, we feel every punch. Mm -hmm. We feel the good stuff and we feel the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. And by the time I left um, and I got divorced about a year and a half ago, I was probably, and it wasn't about the overweight, but my body was so dysfunctional. Like I struggled. I was in a lot of pain all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that I made a decision about two years ago that it was just time to heal. Mm -hmm. And for those of that, those people that know me, they know that I've gone through some really big illnesses. I've had, you know, Epstein-Barr virus. I had mm. um, three years ago, we had really toxic mold in the house, mm. which I think was an actual, I kind of laugh because I think the mold was kind of indicative of my whole life. <laughs> like, you know, my marriage was toxic. The house was toxic. Yeah. Yeah. My body became toxic. And then about five months before, after I had already applied for divorce, five months before I was supposed to actually leave, I got diagnosed with Lyme disease. Oh. And... Um, and well, you know what? The funny thing about that is, is that in my gut, in my intuition, I knew that it was kind of like the universe calling my hand yeah, saying, Hey, you know what? You try to leave this marriage four times and you've gotten sicker every time you try mm. to leave. So we're going to give you one last really big thing. And yeah. are you really yeah. serious? Do you trust that, that this is going like, do you trust us to help you yeah. be, get, you know, like heal? And I really had to fall in a big, deep trust around that and say, you know what? You're right. I, I need to get out because I mean, I just felt like I was going to get sicker. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, and so I had to shut my business down for a little bit. I did close it because I physically actually wasn't able to do much when I was really sick. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had a really good friend of mine tell me around that time. She said, well, what do you think that if you left such toxic relationship, like such a toxic environment right. that you wouldn't have to get 18 vials of blood drawn, maybe you won't need a doctor you know, spend $10,000 on a doctor every year and stuff. And I was like, do you think so? And let me tell you, it's been about a year and a half. Uh -huh. And um, again, I found an amazing doctor. I have never felt better mm. than I've ever, I mean, like ever, like we put pictures up of me a year ago and even like a year and a half ago. And I'm like, I feel like a new woman. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I'm now like finally recognizing what it is to really exercise like self love yeah. and self care and pleasure and Ooh. pleasure is not like people always say, it's funny. I think women say pleasure is all around the sex, but it's not, I mean, I, I don't know, I'm getting sex right now. So like, it's yeah. not about yeah. that. You know what I mean? Right. And to yeah. me, it's about finding that, like that magical place or that peaceful spot that, um, that just brings me joy. Yes. that I didn't have. And I didn't even know how to get before because I was never really taught that. So, yes, yes. Oh, you know. I love everything you're saying. And I know that everybody that hears it is going to relate so much. And it speaks to, I think, you know, we each have different stories for how we yeah. got there, but I hardly know or come across the woman who doesn't have that story in one way, shape or form. Yeah. And, and, and actually in all seriousness, 
I think probably a lot of men have a similar core to their story. It just happens so much differently in a patriarchal society when you're a man. Uh, but I was just listening to a podcast today that a friend of mine does, and he was interviewing a woman who's um, the head of a project called the Good Man Project. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've heard of that. Yes. And she says, and I, I mean, I just, I didn't know anything about it, okay, until I started listening to this podcast. It's right, really cool. Right before yeah. we came live. But she says they are the only ones, like, globally really having a conversation devoted to men, you know, be, I'm going to say b- becoming conscious and living a and conscious vulnerable. life. Absolutely. And vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. consciousness wasn't really a word she used. That's just a way I used to describe it. But I'm so intrigued and I'm hoping this person who runs the podcast wants to connect me to some people in their organization because he thinks I I should contribute, you know, be a contributor to their work. So I I love the idea of that. But I think that it's so like we we all get to these places where we're just lost, you know, we're lost. Like we've gotten too deep into something toxic, into something that separates us from the truth of who we are. And then that comes out in illness or it comes out in, you know, maybe financial problems or professional problems or Mm -hmm. all kinds of different problems. But I love the way you describe that and your own clarity of insight to say, wait a minute, I keep trying to leave and I get sicker and sicker every time I don't. And so like, I've got another shot at getting myself out of this, you know, and Mm -hmm. I've got to take this seriously, because I think that there's a issue that I'm dealing with right now. And I'll talk about this really soon, because I'm always, you know, I'm about all my I process everything, you know, out loud through my work. Um, But this one's really deep. And, and I'm not quite ready to name it right now in front of everybody. But you know, give me a couple weeks, everybody will know. But I, it's funny because just today I thought, oh my gosh, I think if this one particular aspect of my life hadn't gotten so far beyond I could have imed- ever imagined anything bad, I'm not sure I would have woken up to this thing. Because right. this thing is so deep and so dark, as much therapy and coaching and work as I've done on myself for 30 years, I didn't know it was there until yeah. like last week. And it's like, okay. So I think that it brings, you know, there are a bazillion stories. I mean, it's just the classic hero's journey, right? About how the things that are the very hardest things in our lives bring, can, can bring us to our greatest opening, our greatest awareness, our greatest, you know, love, our greatest success, all those things. And your story speaks so beautifully of that. Um, And so thank you for sharing all that with us. Um, So for those of you who are on with us live, we would love to know who you are and uh, where you are and even what you're drinking. If you want, if you dashed (laughs) off to your studio, you probably do not have a mojito in hand. I had a mojito at dinner. So, okay, um, okay. Yeah, I didn't right. have one here. And good. I do actually have champagne in there, but probably not good if I have a champagne right now. So <laughs> the mojito is pretty strong. I'm good. Awesome. It's just always fun to see where people are coming from, you know, geographically. Mm-hmm. And any questions or any comments anybody has, because I know these conversations often, you know, spur your questions. And we love to have those uh, questions and comments in the feed as well. Uh, so... Tell me, so I love the work, like you posted today in the group, I love those photos um, of the women that you've done, you know, more the sort of, like you said, personality driven, you know, photo shoots, all stuff, you know, we could put on our websites or use in our businesses or whatever. Um, But I also know that you do really lovely uh, nudes. Mm -hmm. And so how did you, was that different? Like, how did you get into that? And what I would love, because then I'll tell my own story besides the pinup picture that I posed for that I posted, you know, yesterday with my blog, I've also had a nude portrait done. So I've not had nude photography done, but a nude portrait. And so I'll share my story about what that did for me. But as the photographer, you know, one, tell us how you got into that. And then tell us what you see in the women 
that you photograph in these beautiful nude uh, photographs and gorgeous settings. Like what is, what's their, your, your version of their experience of it, you know? And before so, you start all that, I'll say hello to uh, Donna. Hey, Donna. So glad you're here. Oh, you're in Atlanta. Okay, great. Having read wine. I talked to Donna yesterday, actually. I met Donna King from awesome. a studio opening. Oh, okay. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I met her. That's how I met her. Oh, and then here's Wendy from White Rock, British Columbia. So that's cool. fun. That's fun. I love that. Yeah, okay. Wendy. So ladies, feel free to ask us anything, but go ahead, Rupa, tell us how you got into it and then what you think happens, the transformation sort of, I'm imagining these women all have a transformation during their shoot. That's what they've told me. I mean, so the, the, the nude um, work actually really kind of started by accident as a lot of my stuff te seems to happen. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to challenge myself as a photographer to take some, um, like a nude workshop, right? So mm -hmm. I signed up for this workshop and um, I thought I'll go play and I, I rented this camera that I've been vying for a long time because it shoots like film and I, I, I'm a film girl back in the day. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So um, I went to this workshop and when the instructor came up behind me, um, he said, can I see some of your stuff? So I showed him some of the work and he went, ah, and I'm like, am I doing something wrong? He's like, no, 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 wait till you see these on, on screen. He said, they're amazing. And I'm like, okay. Like, and he's really good. Like he's okay. really good. So I was like, all right, that's cool. And then when I got home, you know, as I do always hide out, I usually don't show my stuff. Okay. And I love this session. This, this and this session at the workshop was done with two models and they were a little bit younger and they were awesome though. Um, it was interesting because the, the male photographers in the workshop were doing all kinds of like crazy, not really, let's just say it was kind of borderline pornographic kind of okay. magazine stuff. And okay. it just, that's not the way I, I, I wanted it. So when it was kind of when, when one of the girls came to me, she goes, what do you want me to do? She means just do me tie a rope around myself. I'm like, honey, <laughs> you know, I'm all right with the S and M stuff, but you can take the rope. Let's just put it off the side. I said, I want really soft and feminine and I want to play with light against your body. Mm. And I said, all about the light. So she's like, oh my gosh, yes. Like, I don't think they'd ever been talked to that way. Like, I just wanted something really artistic and beautiful. Yeah. And to like really show the woman's body in a different way, right? Mm -hmm. So we had this amazing shoot and, um, and then I got brave enough. I think it was like a week later or two weeks later. And I posted a couple pictures on Instagram. And people went crazy. Like it okay. was just like, I wasn't expecting it. And I think yeah. you saw them around that time. It might have okay. been two years ago. I think it was shortly yeah. after that. Okay. And then I found like I had women messaging me saying, mm -hmm. I want a session with you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that wasn't the plan. Mm -hmm. Like I was just doing this for fun. Mm -hmm. And, but I had women in their forties mm -hmm. and fifties mm -hmm. saying my body feels better than it ever did before. I feel more confident about my body. I want you to capture it. And I was like, all right. So I ended up doing a ton of sessions that year, like just for women over 40 and 50 that wanted to do nude sessions and the feedback that I got from them. And a lot of them are on my website. Those yes. are not all models. Most of them on my website are my clients that have given me permission to pick pictures yeah. up there. But one of the best I think the women said to me, the biggest thing that I heard is that in the photo shoot, showing their body, and I, I look at everybody's body as a beautiful body. So yeah. it's like, it's interesting because I never really, I'm one of these that, and that sounds kind of weird, but like you could, I could turn around right now and not remember what somebody has on. Not uh -huh. because I don't care about them, but because I'm more about the, who you are. Mm -hmm. like the more one-on-one -on -one kind of thing, mm -hmm. not about what you're wearing or anything like that. So it's been funny when it came to the nudes, I'm not looking at the body type or anything. I'm just like making this woman, I want this woman to feel amazing. Mm -hmm. And, and it's about playing with light and making it an artistic piece that she would be happy to hang on her own wall, you know? Yes. And my client Patsy, who did the work with me, she had been a, pre a previous client of mine for um, headshots. Okay. And she um, said to me, she goes, this is like, I, she, she, what the word she used was like, I felt my feminine divine. She mm. goes, you lit up this feminine divine. And I was like, oh my gosh, let me write this down. Like I had no yes. what to say more, you know? So she's like, this is what you did for me. And so she told me, she said, I just like felt my body. It didn't matter what shape or form it was in. It was just felt beautiful. And to see it that way. So I was like, oh that was lovely to me because I honestly didn't know I'm still holding the sacred space. I still create this beautiful space for women when they work with me. And yeah. you talk about when you're nude, it's even more vulnerable. Of course. You know? Yeah. Um, and, and actually, but the women that come to me that want to photograph nude don't feel as vulnerable. I think that because they've already made the decision, they're taking off all their clothes and mm -hmm. it's all or none. 
you know? Right, right, right. And, and, and they're good with it. And I think there's a lot of trust there, of course, you know, they yes. have to trust me. Yes. I guess implicitly to be able to, to do that. And so I, I guess for me, I don't, I just take that for granted because I, I couldn't create anything else, but a sacred space for them, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But for them to walk away saying that a lot of women were celebrating their birthdays, they were celebrating, you know, that, um, like they had turned 40 or they had turned 50 or they had been taking care of their bodies and their bodies had healed and all of this stuff. Mm. So I think that the way it all came out was just so beautiful and how they were and why they were doing what they were doing, you know? Yes. So that was really cool. Yes. Yeah. So, Hey, Lori, good to have you on here. And Donna, I so agree. Donna said it's such an amazing gift to bring out the woman's beauty and capture it. And you really do that but regard, you know, all the photos, I would say that, but I Thank think you. that there's something, there is something special to me, something, you know, I'll say sacred too, about a woman. Okay. So a woman who's wanting to be photographed, right? You don't, you know, tie them up and haul them in. So they're there <laughs> taking their they're clothes in their off. Because right. they want to, even if they're afraid right. of it, right? Like, that's how I was. I was like, I want to do this and I'm intimidated to do it, you know, or that's the best word I can come up with. Like, I'm, you know, it's nerve wracking. Like, you're just not used to going to some location and taking your clothes off, you know? Right. And so there is something very, very vulnerable about it. But I think that when you do it and then when you for the women and I have you know if you want to keep your nude photographs private there's nothing wrong with that that is not less than what I'm about to say but when you're also then willing like to let them be on your website and let it be in a public you know mm -hmm. forum that's a whole nother I think that's a whole nother thing and yeah. that's why I put my pinup you know picture on the face well I mean in this Facebook group isn't that risky because it's a private Facebook group, but I put it on my, you know, normal feed as well. Um, mm -hmm. We did, uh, for those who have been in this group for a long time last year, oh, it might've even been before that, but anyway, I did, and we did ask selfies. I did an ask selfie contest, right? That's right. I remember yeah, because that. I had That's heard right. Lux ATL speak, A A L T speak, and, or ATL, ATL. Um, and she was talking about ass selfies and she has this great, you know, YouTube video about how to do it. And so my girlfriends and I, one weekend when we were together, we were playing around with it. Uh, but there's something very liberating about saying, this is my body and I'm going to show it to you, right? I'm going to post this on Facebook or let it be on a photographer's website or, you know, whatever, my own website, whatever. Susan Hyatt's book. I'm in my bra. Yeah. I, I'm not That's naked. Right. The photos in the bear book are, you're, we're all in our bra and underwear, but, um, That's still but it's still, you know, that's a, you know, uh, and I'm okay with that. Right. Like there's some level of loving and accepting yourself and all your, your flaws, the ones we see that seem so big that somebody else, you know, rarely even notices. Um, yeah. And just saying, it's okay. This is who I am. You know, this is I, a map of my journey in life. I, I mean, our bodies right. are a map of our journey. And I always ask women why they do it too. Like, so the gal that I had dinner with tonight, she's actually my client. And I've become really good friends with a lot of my clients. And, yeah. Um, Andy and I just had an excuse. She wanted to talk to me about the retreat that I'm having. And so she went wanted an excuse to have dinner. And she's the gal that hired me last year. Okay. And she, I asked her, like, so tell me what it what, what made you want to do this? I ask all my women, what made yes, you want to do yes, this? Yes. What is it, you're, you know? And one of her reasons was she was turning 40, I think she was turning 43 last year. And so it was a birthday gift. Mm -hmm. But the bigger thing, which I loved about this is that she has an, a nine-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. And she said she wanted her daughter to know that it didn't matter what body type, Mm -hmm. that you could still love your body. And Andy, I mean, she said me outright, like based on what the doctors were saying last year, she was like, you know, 75 pounds, 80 pounds overweight. And she said, um, but she didn't want her daughter looking at these magazines thinking that that was the normal thing. Yeah. So she did this photo shoot and oh my God, like she freaking rocked it by the yeah. way too. It was amazing. And she was able to show her daughter that you can celebrate anybody. 
like yeah. anybody yes you know Every, can be celebrated yeah because yes. she's she doesn't want her daughter growing up thinking that there's just this one body type but like all these young girls are already dieting at a certain age and stuff so a I lot know. of it was for her like really celebrating her that. body but sharing that with her daughter and like being open about the album like we made this beautiful album for her and mm -hmm. her daughter got to see her mom naked and like mm -hmm. beautiful and you know and feeling yeah, like so empowered during yes. this photo shoot that we did. Yes. So that was really cool. I thought that to me was one of the best reasons that a woman's ever done a photo shoot. Yeah, you know. Yes, yes, I love that. And Wendy, you're right. It is a huge gift to give yourself. And 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 Lori, I told it is freedom. Like it is liberating in a way that I didn't anticipate until mm -hmm. I did it. And even doing the pinup. So I did my nude sketch when I for my at my fortieth birthday. So okay. that I was lay, sitting and laying naked, you know, stools, chairs, a bed, whatever. And the artist is sketching, just doing a whole bunch of kind of rough sketches. And then she took those and created, you know, uh, the final sketch. So like in the okay. final sketch, it looks kind of like I'm laying on a blanket, which I never was. Like it's not, you know, it's not photography. It's not exactly what I what she compiled it. But Anyway, and so I'm on my back and I'm, I'm on my side on my, so it's my head to my feet on my back. I, I'm not on my back. I'm sorry. Of my back with me laying on my side. And uh, she captured my ass perfectly. It's like, yep, that is absolutely my ass. That's absolutely the way my side look, you know, like it was really great. She did a great job. Yeah. And I had it. So I had it framed and it's big. It's probably I don't know, something at least like 36 by 24 or something. I don't know. It's big. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so my kids saw it. And then when I had grandkids, my grandkids saw it. And I remember the day that my grandson, I don't remember how old he was, but little, you know, and he was like, Grandma B, is that a picture of you over your bed? Yeah. You know? I was like, yep, that's me, it. you know. That's great. So it really is. But then when I did the pinup, which I did about, a year, maybe a year and a half ago, that was a whole nother fun thing because that was meant to be, the, the one was much more artistic, you know, the right. pinup was meant to be a little sexy, right? right? And of course, I love the topic of sex and sexuality and exploring using your sexuality really as a gateway to enlightenment is the truth of it. Um, because I think that we're so used to hiding that and not being seen and not even knowing who we are sexually and sensually that it's just this whole, it's a whole black hole in our psyche kind of a thing. And so as we open the doors into that arena, like it opens it into all the other areas of our lives. And so I'm very passionate about that part, you know, of our journey. So it was really fun doing this thing that's kind of sexy but again, yeah. I'm going to hang it up in my house and I don't care if my grandchildren see it. You know, right. it's not, it's not right. pornography. It's sexy, yeah. you know, and uh, not that I'm shaming pornography because I've, you know, you know, whatever that is. It's a, it's, it's, it's thing. If that's what you, you know, wh where you want to be. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, it's liberating in a way that I didn't anticipate when I did it at 40 or when I did the pinup a year and a half ago, you know, when I was in a very, you know, different place, much more open and comfortable with myself when I did the pinup, but it was right. still super liberating. Right. Yeah. Right. And a lot of women are, I mean, it doesn't come naturally, you know? So, I mean, it's like for some of the women, even like keeping clothes on, it's like, it's still really vulnerable. So, yes. I mean, you know, it's almost just, just as much or more sometimes, honestly, it's been really interesting to me. Yeah. I think being photographed and putting, you know, there's so much about we talk a lot about wanting to be seen and heard and yet for whatever reasons in that way that, you know, is often the case, there's that paradox of we often, maybe it's just because we're so used to not being seen and heard. We will tend to shy away or avoid completely have a lot of resistance to scenarios where we could be seen and heard, you know, because that's a lot too with online entrepreneurs or, you know, it doesn't have to be there. It could be physically in the, you know, corporate office, in the boardroom, whatever, where we'll keep our mouth shut when we know the answer or, you know, whatever, defer to men in subtle ways or not so subtle ways. Um, 
because, you know, if nothing else, because we've been trained to be that way for so many generations. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the boardroom trains us. That, you know, I was I was in corporate for twenty five years. Oh, okay, no, so I didn't like, know that. I mean, I yeah, I came out of like having a pretty heavy duty management position at the age of forty. I was like a, a senior director for a big company. So I mean, and I'd be in a room with, and this is not knocking all men, but I'd be in a room with all men. I was the only senior female at the time. Okay, and you know, I, I mean, we'd have we'd have like a topic of conversation and, and I would come up with an idea and everybody would just look at me and mm -hmm. then the man would come up with an idea in a different language, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all the guys were like, Oh my God, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. You know? So I remember I had a really awesome boss at the time and I would go to bill and I'm like, you were in the meeting, right? You heard what I said, right? And he's right. like, I did. He said, you said it. He said, they just can't hear you. So mm -hmm. I think culturally we've also been kind of, you know, like, um, I don't know what the word is, but kind of taught that even if we make sense, we don't make sense all the time. So, right. I mean, you know, like I was sitting in a room with six men and then the guy would say it and they'd be all like, give Oh, what a time. great idea. I know. Right. Exactly. Know. And it was like, so that's why I'm like, I never want to go back. I mean, I don't want to ever go back to corporate because talk about not being seen or heard, you mm -hmm. know? And, mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think that we've, uh, I think, like I, my, my daughter works in a very different field now and, you know, and I've talked to her a lot about how she can find her voice without getting upset or without doing certain things. And, and, you know, and she actually now actually demands it in yes. some situations. It's yes. been really interesting. Like she's like not playing, she's playing hardball now with some of these guys. She works, she's a um, creative director for a big country musician here in Atlanta. Okay. And, um, and there's times that, you know, she'll be like, like people are not getting, and not just her, but like just even if it's other women, she's standing up for that more and more. Yes. So I think it's changing now too. Yeah. You know? I mean, women oh, are it being is. More. It's so much like, so how old is she? She's 30. Okay. So my daughters are 30, uh, <laughs> three and 38. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, when I look at them and their ability and, and this is being raised. These are girls that were raised in a home at least until they were 10 ish, you know, early teens mm -hmm. where the, cause their dad and I were married 16 years. We, we were involved in a very conservative, you know, religious environment. Our roles were super 1950s gender traditional okay. um and their dad you know just absolutely not that he would probably say this out loud but women just women girls you're just not as good as like they just knew they weren't as good right. as their brothers just because whatever right. they have vaginas right so even girls who grew up in a home like that and similar to what you said at the beginning one of the mm -hmm. reasons I left that marriage was because I realized, holy smokes. I mean, their dad had some fine qualities, but he was also, you know, like that and emotionally abusive to me and very controlling, whatever. And I'm like, if I don't get out of here, I'm setting up my daughters to marry men just like their dad, because I'm saying every day it's okay. You know, yep, that's conditioning. Yeah. And I'm telling my sons they can be that kind of a husband. And right. I just couldn't, like, I couldn't bear the idea that I was setting my kids up for that. Right. Uh, so I left. But so even with that sort of upbringing, my girls are so much more assertive and so much more sure of themselves and who they are and so much more willing to be seen and heard, even if they have to fight for it a little bit than right. in my generation. And when I look at, I have two granddaughters and when I look at these my granddaughters who are five and six, like these girls are just fierce. You know, they're being raised right. by moms and that dads and my, and my exactly. girls chose, you know, really well. And so they're married to these men who want their daughters right. to grow up right. powerful. And yeah. so I do think, I, I mean, I, you know, not to take it for uh, as if we don't have to work on it, but I do think we're at an end at the end of an era sort of for, how that's going to transpire because I think we've reached a bit of a tipping point and it may not so. be in my generation, but as, right. we, as we go down where it, just, right. it won't fly. And I think, you know, it's funny because the last few guys I've dated just casually have been like in their mid third, like one was 33, one was like 35, <laughs> 36. And 
of course, they love me because I'm not worried about my biological clock, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm just fun and we can, you know, go have fun and whatever. They weren't, there was no intention of having some kind of serious relationship. But I love, one of the things I love about guys that age is that they don't have those gender stereotypes that yeah, men my age or pushing 60 yeah. or into their 60s, you know, have. And yeah. so to me, you know, a lot of these guys were well, the ones I went out with. They were raised by either single moms or, you know, assertive, strong women. And yeah. it just made such a difference in who they are and how they were responding to me even on a date, you right. know, compared to, you know, and in bed as well. Um, so a lot of good <laughs> things about that. But anyway, <laughs> I don't want to get distracted with that. Uh, <laughs> I can live vicariously through you. I have zero social life, yeah. so I'm not ready well, yet. Well, you know what? I've been I've been off that wagon for about a year. I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's been almost a year since I've had sex with a man. That's funny. Way too long for me. But anyway, uh, you know, all things in time. I've had other things on my mind this year. So uh, well, <laughs> as, we, as we wrap up, uh, wrap up, one thing I would love, if you – if it feels appropriate to you, because like, I don't know what, I, I'm assuming because these nude photos are on your website, these, obviously these women have given you permission and stuff. I would love for you to do a post. You can do it tomorrow because I know it's late there um, with some of these, either the link to the page with the nudes on sure. it or some of them. Like I would really love the women in our, in our group to see some of these nude photographs and just how gorgeous and how, so they can kind of imagine themselves in that, you know, vicariously sure. through that. And, um, and then also, obviously, I mean, I put links to your website and things like that in the blog and various posts, but I just want women to have a place they can go real quick to get in touch with you. Um, yeah. So because I think, and we will, I mean, we will do a photo shoot together, you know, one day because, I, and I've always wanted to do, so to me doing a nude photograph is a hundred times more vulnerable than what I've done because it's a camera. Like this isn't a drawing, you know, or a painting. This is, you know, where you don't have to show the scar I have that's this long running across my stomach and, you know, that a camera could pick up. When I did the photo shoot with, for Bear, so mm -hmm. here was a really, so this Bear is written by a woman, Susan Hyatt. She's a life coach and, um, she's written a book on, you know, kind of body positivity and losing weight from a completely different mindset that than diet culture is and all of that. So check out that if you have any interest in that, because it's a great book and yeah. on her website. And then some, there are some photos in the book. Anyway, she did a photo shoot of women in, we, we were all in nude uh, bras and panties and it was like a full day thing. We went to the studio, and so throughout the day, like, so there were photos just of me, there were photos of me with various combinations of women, a few, was, and then Susan came for a while, and so there's some with us with her, you know, whatever, and then various ones were picked out and used for marketing, and even that, just, so there was this point where she, they wanted to do one with Susan in the middle and all of us, there was probably about 12 of us in, you know, that got cast to be in this photo shoot, and so mm -hmm. they wanted to do one, you know, a big, long row of us. And so I'm sitting, now this is late in the afternoon. So then I've been hanging out in my underwear all day. And so the things I was worried about in the morning, like, are they looking at my stomach and how it sticks out? I have a herniated, okay. I have herniated abs in my upper abs. So from my belly button up, I look pregnant. I mean, I'm not being, you know, body dysmorphic or something. I look pregnant because my stomach's hard and it sticks out like I'm pregnant. And, um, there's nothing I can do about it, but I have, sur I could have surgery, you know, to correct it, but I I've not done that. So anyway, initially I was, you know, a little self-conscious about that. That's what I'm self-conscious about. Okay. The rest of my body, I pretty much am in love with. And uh, so, but by afternoon I have totally forgotten about that. Right. Cause you we're standing around our underwear for six hours. You just forget about it. Right. So they line us up to do the shoot and I'm on the side of my body where I have this other, I also have a big scar running across my stomach, which is part mm -hmm. of why my muscles uh, herniated. But anyway, and that side of my body is facing the camera. Now I'm not even thinking it. Okay. Cause it's whatever. And we were drinking a lot of champagne, but anyway, and uh, one of the gal who was running, there was like a designer and a photographer and the designer was like, Oh, I want to move Brenda to the other side. Cause of how tall I was. I'm, pretty tall and I was taller than most of the other women 
And the photographer, Chelsea, who I'm sure you know, Chelsea Saunders, um, she was like, no, we can see her scar if she's on this side. And I want that to show. And I was like, it so took me back because I'm like, here's a woman looking at a part of my body that I'm usually shaming or hiding. And that's right. this beautiful thing she wants to be sure shows up in this picture. And it just really, you know, it was a real eye opener to me. Yeah. Um, and so what is your, so your parting words for anybody who's like, wow, I don't know if I could do that or, you know, that feels too intimidating to me. Do you have any, you know, sort of words of wisdom to help us tap into that part of ourselves that can set ourselves free? You know, I would say it, like every woman does it when she's ready. Mm -hmm. And not every, even every woman that says that she's ready, sometimes when she gets to the studio, she's like, oh my God, what the hell did I just, why did I just do this? You know, mm -hmm. but I think that, you know, when you're ready and that freedom, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, I knew the day I needed to leave my marriage. Right. Mm -hmm. It wasn't over a big fight. It wasn't over anything. I, I just knew in that moment when he treated me that one more time, the hundredth yeah. time that it was time to go. Yeah. So there's, I think there's a, an awakening that happens mm -hmm. with women. Like I actually challenge myself to my own photo shoots once a year. Now I don't trade with another photographer. I pay a photographer to do it uh -huh. because I also want to be in my client's position of what it feels like yes. to invest in myself. And a lot of photographers yeah. don't do that, but I actually have started doing that once that. a year. I love now, that. I've not done a nude and the only reason I have not done a nude or a boudoir, I'm not a big boudoir gal myself, but I have not done it because I am actually looking for a photographer that can capture work like I capture work. So it sounds yes. terrible, but like no. I want, I want an artistic fine yes. nude. Like a, I want a fine art nude done if I'm going to do a nude. Yes. And I shoot fine art nudes basically is when I do. Yeah. So I mean, I do a lot, and I didn't know I didn't call it fine art until people started looking at it and saying that this is very fine art kind of a style. So yes. I think for women, you know, there's no pressure, right? Yeah. Like I feel like women, like my clients <laughs> literally, I would say, touch me or poke me through my website, through conversations yeah. on Instagram and Facebook, probably for sometimes a month, sometimes six months, sometimes a year. Yeah. And then one day they just say, I really kind of resonate with you. I'm kind of right. jiving with what you say. I love how I feel when you talk about things. So I want to be in there with you. Yeah. And so a lot of us, this is all about trust. Yes, honestly, Brenda. So, yes. And I always tell women, if you don't hire me and you hire another photographer, the biggest thing is you have to trust them. Yeah. So I don't really talk. I have very, very intimate conversations with women about their bodies. Mm -hmm. I don't always say let, like, I don't, I like, I want that thing to show. Right. I will actually very quietly woman say that I have actually had a conversation just the other day with a gal. So I need to just be really, you know, I just need to ask you, she had a marking on her arm or I think it was on her arm around her neck. And I said, I just need to know, is that a birthmark or can I, do you want me to post? So I have these conversations with yeah. me, like, do you want me to take that out post or do you want me to do right. it? What do you want it to look like? Do you want it to show? Yeah. So we can have intimate conversations around like, what are you comfortable with? What are you right. not comfortable with? Because yeah. Not every woman needs to feel like I, I want them to feel comfortable. One yes. thing I don't do that I will tell you is that I don't use Photoshop to make women look 20 pounds lighter. Right. That I will not. Do. Right, right, right. Um, and I love my clients because my clients actually come to me. And my, one of my clients actually two years ago said, so she had worked with me before. And she said, just so you know, and she goes, and I know you don't do this. She goes, but you know, I'm turning 60 and I don't want to look 50. And I'm like, Jeannie you know, I right. don't do that. Like, that's not right. what I do. Like, I'm not right. turning your, I'm not taking wrinkles out of your skin. We're going to yes. just, cause I just feel like part of that is honoring who you are Absolutely. and honoring your time on this earth and the wisdom yes. that you have, you know, yes. like, why do we want to get rid of that? Exactly. That's me personally. Yeah. So the women that work with me have those, that same belief practice. And if they don't, they go to another photographer, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but when you pose nude, I mean, everything shows, but you don't have to show everything. Yeah. You show what's comfortable to you and what feels right to you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, and I have, I'll put some images up tomorrow. There's one or two of my favorites are of Andy um, because she was so comfortable in her body. And, you know, if, even though she said the doctor says she was a hundred pounds overweight, man, she carries herself beautifully. Yeah. She just feels Ooh, that'd amazing. Be lovely. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put a couple of those up and I'll pull, yeah. I'll pull a couple of, I'll put a few of them up. The ones that I can, I don't want your Facebook group to get shut down right. because I can't put them all up. I can't yeah. put certain ones up because, okay. um, 
uh, of Facebook rules. Okay. Basically. Okay. 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 Great. Thank, so I'll thank you for that. We I don't can. want our group yeah, shut yeah. down and I wouldn't have thought of that. Um, no. So yeah. So in our comments here, I just want to say Lori, definitely. I'm glad it's on your bucket list and definitely do it. It's so much fun. <laughs> uh, and Wendy, thank you. Thank you. She thinks we're rocking our uh, gray, our silver locks. Ah, thank you, Wendy. <laughs> I'm about to go, you know, I'm, I'm going all gray here soon. That's yeah. like me probably in another couple of months, all gray. Yeah. I'm all, this is my natural it. color. I'm, I'm very yeah. white up through here, but then I still have some dark on, you know, the gray or salt and pepper, whatever you want to call it on the top. Uh, um, yeah, Mine's, if I if I went pixie cut tomorrow, it would be all silver. Mm -hmm. That's just pretty much. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I'm done fighting it. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm 53 too. this year, and I'm like, it's just it is what it is. Yeah, so, I love purple. I I when I'm ready to start spending money can, again on having my hair color, I love a lavender, you know, kind of purple all up through yeah. here. I've done that some in in the last year, and I love that. But uh, other than that, I don't plan on putting like real, like a brunette or a something, a color, color, you know, yeah. back in my hair again. Um, I think I'm done. Too. Yeah. I say that now, but we'll see. But the funny thing is that I've been out and about and I have more men, like younger guys. Like I had a guy stop me. The I don't know what it was. He's like at Target or something. He's like, I love your hair. And I'm like, yeah, really? Oh, I get I'm like, so but I have a lot of younger women doing that too. A lot mm -hmm. of young women actually stop me. And they're like, is that your yeah. real silver? I'm like, that's my real silver. This is yes. what it is. So yeah. Yeah. Cause young girls are paying to get this done. Yes. Yes. You I know? know. I know. I know. That is so true. So true. They are. Yes. So I agree, Lori. I think you should have Rupa do your, do your pictures. I think that would be perfect. Call me, Lori. Yeah, Reach out to me. I'm in Atlanta. I will talk to you about what we can do. I don't know where you're at, but I have a lot. Actually, 80% of my clientele fly to Atlanta to work with me. I don't do have, I have a lot of women in Atlanta now, but I have tons of women that actually come into Atlanta, stay the night. My studio's in town. They'll do like a girl's night, like where they just do a massage and they'll get a hotel yeah. room and we do this awesome photo shoot. And that's like their gift to themselves. Yeah, I think that's an awesome gift to yourself. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for everybody who was live, everybody who watches it on the replay. Um, you know, post your comments or any questions you have. And Rupa, thank you so much. I loved this conversation and I Thanks, love Brenda. your work. So thank you so much. Thank you, Brenda. I have a you. great Other night. Caitlin, we got some people. I'll talk to you soon and I'll post some pictures tomorrow. That'll be awesome. Thank you guys. Okay. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for having me.